or questions for you that you may have about the gifts or commitments you've already made to us. And secondly, I have something very exciting to share with you this morning. We're pleased to welcome back one of our most favorite speakers here at Unity, the Reverend Denise Schelling. Next Sunday, she will be speaking at all the services. Her spiritual wisdom and inspirational messages have earned her a really special place in our hearts. She is an ordained Unity minister who has served many Unity ministries in California. Her joy is discovering the awakened consciousness within us that is all ready to be known and experienced. To search for the divine essence of who we are and to discover the spark of divine that is in each and every one of our hearts. She'll be talking about walking by faith, not by sight. And now, I'd like to invite to the lectern, Reverend David. He's going to share with you our summer classes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, it really is summer, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> Let me get here so quick. We have the uh, a whole set of uh, new classes starting this week. And uh, they're in your bullet, and I want to just mention the different categories that are there because they, they are such a wonderful selection. Now, in the summer, we do shorter, so this is like four weeks uh, for each class. And we've, we've got on Mondays, we've got a class on healing. On Tuesdays, we're doing global coherence, very, very powerful, uh, amazing movement of science and consciousness. On uh, Wednesdays is the spiritual quest, that uh, wonderful study into that real nature of spiritual growth and spiritual unfoldment. And uh, Thursdays, the, the use of uh, art in connection deeply with our, our, our guidance, a wonderful way of guidance. Uh, Thursdays is the chance to experience our founder, Charles Fillmore. And one of, one of his uh, primary spiritual studies, beautiful, beautiful opportunity. And then movies on Friday night. Popcorn and purpose coming in and having a great time. So attend them all. <laughs> Very good. All oh, exciting. And now I'd like to invent, uh, invite. Good morning. Good morning. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing this, and I'll be explaining this to you in a minute. I'd like to start with love. That's all there is. Everything stems off of love. For me, my nationality is Mexican. So as many of you know, myself, we Latinos, love to show our love through feeding people. Yeah. And today at 12.15, we will, we will have our Love and Action program. Shortly thereafter, we will be barbecuing chicken and veg burgers, veggie burgers for all. What a better way to show my love for this place and to you, my, all my Unity family, than over a meal. We will be breaking bread together. So, for you at the 9.30, please return to the garden room here on this beautiful Sunday at 12.15 to be part of our Love and Action program. <coughs> To entice you all to return, I'm going to start cooking right now. I'm going to put some chicken on. Let you try it. So, so one, either you'll know what you're missing if you don't come back at 12:15, or two, know that you'll be here with your Unity family, enjoying some great food and companionship. So I'll see you all here at 12:15. He's going to tantalate your taste buds. Now, if you are here for the very first time, would you please raise your hand? If you're here for the very, very first time, anyone? Well, we're all family this morning. Well, I'm going to still do the prayer for all of us. So just as God has a design 
Wiggle around, take that deep breath, and let it out as we just rest in this beautiful sacred space together, letting ourselves open in this time of prayer and meditation. And I invite you as you join in the music to let it take you into that center of your heart.
of that presence, that love. those things that have filled our minds in the busy and full lives and gently surrender surrender every care and concern or no matter what it is in our lives that we have had concern about we know that God is in this situation, that God is in every being, that that divine love is present in us. And so we let go, surrendering to that care, surrendering to that love. Knowing so dear to us are unfolded in that love. And we let go opening to the beautiful gift of knowing. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. so beautifully on 
summer mornings and children's laughter and the faces of friends. You who are this beautiful experience of love that we find within our hearts. We now make that choice to send the power of your presence, the power of your love, now to touch and uplift and heal, to prosper, guide, and bless. And we radiate that love from our hearts, first into our own bodies for, for our healing vitality. We send it to those that are dear to us, touching, blessing, healing each one. We radiate your love sending it across the spiritual community on this beautiful day as it in, engages ever more deeply your vision flowing through all our lives. We radiate this love, sending it across these communities in which we live in this beautiful part of the world. We radiate your love, sending it across our nation and all the nations of the world, that their people and leaders might heal of their fears and bring forth their great wisdom and compassion. And we radiate your love, sending it to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillside. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. Beloved Presence, we radiate your love to the earth and to its creatures and to the heart of every single person. For you are that love in every heart. And in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world together. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world again. Divine love flows through my heart.
Thank you. Wow. What a, what a treat each of you is. And together you're awesome. <laughs> oh. There, there's something that is, is a particular delight to my being. And it's, it's when, when we accomplish something spiritually together. And my heart just goes, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Look what happened. And today's, today's one of those days, you know, where you set out, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. And then you actually show up and you did it. And you go, oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> There's a, but it's, it's always it's always about the unfolding of this, this amazing spiritual self that each of us is and this, this that spirit has given you to do in your life. So let me, let me ask, is there anything that you've had a dream to do, that you've, you've had that heart's desire to bring, to bring into expression, to bring forward in, in your life? Anything that's kind of been calling from within you. And sometimes those things are, you know, they're, they're as simple as, you know, time to do the garden. Uh, because that's, that's what calls to me in there. You know, or to, to renew relationships that need to go to another level. Or to, to draw a, a whole new dynamic or career or expression into one's life. Or to... Take on that which seems the impossible to accomplish. Because it needs to happen. When that dream's there, that is spirit in you. That's your own soul, your own purpose, saying it's you and it's time. That's, that's how that happens that desire within the heart and one of the gifts that we have here at Unity Center is because we, we've been given the gift of knowing and understanding these powerful spiritual principles through which we create our lives and that help us to align and grow in, in deeper connection and attunement to that divine presence and its work in us we we have the opportunity to practice those things together collectively so that as we learn as a whole, that consciousness, that understanding is deepened for all of us. And we, and we, get, to, we get to learn from each other. You know, we get to, to practice these principles and see. You know, everybody gets to see when we blow it. What a gift. <laughs> and, and, and when we put it together, it comes to, okay, we learned. We, we, we saw how to do that. So it, so it helps every single one of us in, in bringing forth that new consciousness. Because when you, when you feel that desire on your heart, that's what it is. It's that new consciousness that wants to come forward in some way in your life. That greater awareness and expression of that goodness that the divine is. So I want to just touch on kind of what, we, what we've been working on collectively in responding to a heart's desire. Uh, and, and if we go back, uh, it's probably about four years ago that uh, our board began to hear kind of a desire coming up from different folks and you know, saying, wow, you know, this is, this is a wonderful place we have here. And it has been very heavily used for 30 years and maybe it needs some new care and needs to be lifted and cared for uh, and is it time for us to do that and so we began to you know ask each ask each other and, and, the, and so the board said well you know gee we feel like that's so but let's check with everybody so we went and we all came together and we we, we really got, did an extensive survey and question for all of us. You know, what is it that you think is most important? And as we did that prayer and attuned to our heart and that guidance came out that it was time as a spiritual community to renew our 
uh, renew our facility. And we, it got real clear what was, you know, the different priorities that we had. So we could say yes to that. And then, uh, so, we, so we looked and said, okay, when we, when we understand now, we want to we wanna do this. Okay, so we, we made that commitment. Now, if, if you'll remember on those times where you've really had something that you knew was yours to do and you, and you checked inside yourself and, yeah, you did that guidance, you did the looking at, you know, is it real? Because we have, we have plenty of desires come along. that They aren't really deep guidance. They're just stuff. Okay, so, you know, they're in that process for the spiritual being. When you, when you, when you think you have that, you look and say, is this real? You know, is this really what I'm being called to do, to bring forth? Is this mine? And, and so we, having done that, and then we made that commitment. That's the commitment of intention. So we had that intention to do it. So then we said, okay, well, now how are we going to do it? So, so we, we got together in all sorts of groups and combinations and explored ideas, and uh, we then came together as a community and said, now, are we really committed to this? You know, are we going to make the commitment to let it happen? Because the commitment of intention is important. But the great thing about the commitment of intention is you can leave it at the idea level and never have to deal with it. Great idea, yes, I'm willing to do that, God, if you ever make my life that way, I might show up. The difference is we got together and made the financial commitment to make it happen. So we made the commitment of manifestation. That's different than intention. Okay, that's the real commitment. When we put expression in it all the way into the third dimensional world. You know, if you want to do the garden and you never take hold of the shovel and walk outside, the greatest designs in the world stay on the paper. I've done a couple gardens that way. That's why I can, I can mention that. You know, they, it was a beautiful design. It really was. But the shovel didn't, didn't come out. Okay, so that, it's that next level where we go into the physical experience. And, and we as a spiritual community made that commitment. We made a commitment to, to collectively bring forth somewhere near $700,000 to renew our, uh, our facility. And because we did that, then we could, we could put the energy and the focus into making it happen. So we did, you know, all the things, the architects and the designs and the ideas and this possibility. And folks worked with many, many ideas. And we came up and we looked at what it would probably take to do it. And we said, now, now here's the deal. If we really want to do this, okay, we can, we can manifest this... Uh, a part of what you want for this amount of money. And then we can wait for a while and, you know, then do another part, you know, or we can do it all together, you know, and, uh, you know, find, finance it and do it now and, and have it now. So what's, what do we want to do? That's important because every, when we go to, deeper into the experience of that heart's desire, what you keep finding is there are deeper questions that come up. Now, one of the things that happened for us was we didn't just make the commitment to a building. We made the commitment to expand our consciousness of prosperity. And so one of the first questions came to us was, well, we can do this or we can do that, which really asks more. Where are we? What are we committed to? Can we expand beyond what we can see at this moment? We got together and said, we're going to do it. We said, you know, and the congregation said, you can borrow a million and a half to do it. We'll, but get going. <laughs> so, so we did. 
we we got the bank and we, you know we were going through the permit process and we had all that sort of stuff we were all ready and then we had the most wonderful spiritual challenge that most of us have gotten into a while the stock market collapsed the economy went into the worst recession since the great depression and all of us were affected by it in one way or another in our lives, many of our people lost homes, they lost jobs, and they were, their resources were in having to support and, and help people in, in, not only in the community, but in their families. Huge change. We said, wait a minute. Now what's going on? Let's get, let's get together because this was different than we thought we were committing to. You know, have you ever noticed with the love thing when you're gonna love a little deeper? And you make that commitment, and you notice, you know, I'm really good at loving those folks that love me. And there's some folks begin to show up that might not have that attitude towards you. Have you ever noticed how that kind of happens? When you say, I'm going to love a little deeper? Well, the same thing happens with prosperity. When things are flush, it's easy to feel prosperous. But our growth comes when we confront the belief in lack, the fear of not having enough, the collective agreement, there's not enough, it can't work, ain't it awful? And that's where the spiritual question gets strong. When we came together, was an amazing thing to see us say all of us know we're going forward God is our source not this economy not our jobs God is our source and we'll do it okay we did we took that that holding to that truth and we stepped forward. We moved here to uh, having our services at Heather Farm. We got down here. We were, we were centered, and we knew the truth. And the bank said, we don't do construction loans anymore. We've changed our policy. Sorry, guys. We're out of here. So we, so we checked, and we, we, we got in the guidance. Hold to it. So we held to it. And we held to it. And eventually, because we know the truth, whatever that when that uh, heart's desire is given to you, when that thing that your life is about, when you're called to that, that divine power doesn't forget to finance you. Whether it's a business or it's your kid in college or the next thing that you're doing or it's taking care of something for your, your body or your community, when God says yes, God, there's only God. So it's not a part of God saying no. But we keep having to deal with our own consciousness. And the problem is, in that, in that heart's desire, one of the reasons that we, we find ourselves in struggle so often is that it is a desire rather than a manifestation because our consciousness is at this level, not at that level. We have to expand our consciousness, expand our awareness of that goodness and live at that level before things can manifest at that level because our world consciously re constantly reflects to us our consciousness. And so the fears, the insecurities, the doubts, the false beliefs come up not to stop us, but to give us the choice to take a hold of something deeper, to hold and bring forth a greater truth and to express our connection with God at a deeper level. That's what's going on. And so we did that. We held to that. We had no idea how or where. I think Lisa said that she talked to 26 banks, many of them extensively. They loved us. But, and then, we drew that which helped us attune to and step through that 
limited belief that someone could withhold from us our good. God had said it. God was going to finance it. We just had to keep going until we found out how. And keep in face of the no, knowing that was God saying yes. Come on. Come on. Step through it. Don't let it limit who you are. Don't let it limit your life. Know that I'm here. Connect more deeply with me. And so we, we had the beautiful experience of the financing happened, the construction began, and we get to, you know, this afternoon we'll not only celebrate that, but we'll walk, walk through it as well. But it's such an opportunity together to see that process of manifestation. It is a spiritual process, and it's about every one of our lives. You know, we share together those buildings and the, and the worship space and the, and, and the process, but every one of us goes out into a world where if you're here, you've got purpose to fulfill. You don't get out of it to get out of here. That divine purpose is in you, in your heart. It's what your soul is here for. And so that desire, that guidance, that which calls you to something higher keeps coming, keeps coming. We keep learning how to step into it more completely, more fully, bring it forth and change the consciousness in it. The power, the power, as we got to see this again, was making the commitment and then holding the commitment, staying with it. Now, we had to ask each time. We had to look because sometimes we misunderstood. Sometimes we haven't, you know, there are things that we haven't addressed. Sometimes we got uh, confused between real guidance and just wish fulfillment. So we, we have to keep looking. And when you look with your head, it will tell you everything that can go wrong. It is excellent at that. That's what it's designed for. Your head was designed by the celestial lawyer. Okay? It is going to tell you every way that things go wrong and you have to protect yourself against everything. Okay? Fortunately, that's only one part <laughs> of consciousness. <laughs> there is that which is that infinite guidance. I am guided by infinite wisdom. You are guided by infinite wisdom. You are prospered by divine love because it's that love that flows through your life empowering what you're about. I am guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by divine love. I am guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by divine love. Yeah. I am guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by divine love. There's a beautiful story of an experience of that shared by Maya Angelou. She tells of a, uh, uh, a woman, this happened about 1903, a uh, black woman in the South. Her, uh, she she uh, had two small children, and she and her husband basically faced that their, their marriage wasn't working for either one of them, so may they made the, the, the choice to go their separate ways. And... So she found herself a, a single mother of two little ones. And she looked at what she could do to meet the needs of her family. Now, she was in a, in a very subsistence existence. Okay. At a time and in a culture where not only were women not, not empowered, but black women in particular found it very difficult to have flexibility within the society that they were in. And the, the way that her friends suggested she provide for herself was going to work in the, in the homes of, of people there in, the, in their community. But she, she didn't 
her heart said something else. She didn't want to work for someone. She wanted to, she wanted to have her own world or she wanted to have her own destiny. She wanted to be able to provide not just meagerly for her family, but, but well. And she wanted, she wanted to open a real door of prosperity. So she responded to that heart's desire. And part of what she did was she, she really reflected, like we were talking about, I mean, she really looked, what can I do, is this real, or am I just, you know, flaking the whole thing off and trying to be irresponsible, and I need to go get a job, work, and that sort of thing. So she really looked, and, and she began to, an idea began to unfold for her. So she, then one day, she, she was looking at, at how she could fulfill this desire. So she took two five-gallon uh, buckets, and she put rocks in them. She took and carried the rocks the three miles from her house to the cotton mill, the cotton gin that was there in the, in the area. And she took a couple of the rocks out there, and then she went on two miles further to the uh, lumber mill and took some more rocks out there and came back home. Now, so she realized she could do it. Now, she was uh, about six foot tall. She was very, very strong. So she was a strong woman, and this was a physical, you know, very physically demanding thing she was looking at, but she understood she could do it. So then she took, and at this point, what she was working with was an idea. But then she took the very little bit of money she had, and she, and she bought some, some meat and some flour. She got home and cooked up the meat, and... Uh, took the took the flour, made it in into a pastry, put the meat in the in the pastry, and folded it up, put it in the buckets, and went went to sleep that night. And the next day she went, and she walked, took the uh, these things in her pails, and she walked the three miles to the cotton gin. Started a fire there, got out the frying pan that was in her t- pail, and she put some some lard in there. And just as the workers were coming out for lunch break. She put the pastry with the meat in there, and she was cooking them in then. And um, they couldn't help but smell it. <laughs> so they, they, they came over and were asking her about it, you know. And so she, she sold them. By, I think she, she was charging five cents for each one of the little meat, uh, meat pies that she made. And, and then, uh, you know, when she sold all she could there, she packed up what she, what she uh, hadn't sold, took it over the two miles to the lumber mill, and sold it uh, cold for three cents. Okay, now, the next day she started at the lumber mill and then went, so every day she'd switch, she'd switch back and forth and she would do this every day. Now, those of you that have southern experience in you know what summer in the south, hot, muggy, she was there over her fire making it happen when it got cold, when it rained, when she was there. And then she realized at one point that this group of people had really become dependent on her doing this. So she had another option. So she went and started doing it in between the two places because now they'd come to her. Okay, And then she could build a little shack. And she ended up with a store there that was serving these two businesses and their workers. And it had started with food, but it went to all the sorts of things that you need and that are handy and that were a part of uh, that, uh, that time and that culture. So he ended up a successful business owner with her own property, her own business, taking care of her family, not meagerly, but within that culture abundantly. But she'd had a heart's desire to bring forth her life in a different way, and she made the commitment to make it happen. Somehow or other, when I think of that, and I think of all that we